Welcome to Orbital Dynamics, Part 48. This part is based on excerpts from the book, The Mechanical Universe. We said before that the total mass times acceleration equals dmv dt, which equals the total external force. If we had a system of particles whose center of mass were moving at a constant velocity, dmv dt would equal zero. If we take the indefinite integral of both sides, we get that mv equals a constant. The antiderivative of dmv dt is simply mv, and the derivative of any constant is zero. That means the antiderivative of zero must be some constant. We said that mass times the velocity is momentum. This equation implies that if there are no external forces acting on a system of particles, then the, mom the momentum is constant. This is the law of the conservation of momentum. Imagine an explosion that sends three particles out in different directions. Assume the momentum of the system of three particles was zero before the explosion. It would then have to be zero afterwards. The sum of each of the masses times their velocities must equal zero. If we knew the momentum of two of the particles, we could derive the third. Rocket propulsion is a good example of the conservation of momentum. Let's establish a momentum p at time t. The rocket propels itself by ejecting gas at a high speed in one direction and is accelerated by recoil in the opposite direction. Let's say that the gas is ejected relative to the rocket at a velocity of minus v at time t. The total delta v would be big V of t minus little v of t. Relative to us, at time t, the rocket was moving at big V of t. At time t plus h, the momentum is m of t plus h times v of t plus h. In order to create that thrust, the rocket had to expel mass. The change in mass, or delta m, is the mass at the time t minus the mass at time t plus h. The momentum of the exhaust is delta m times delta v. And that equals m of t plus h minus m of t times big V of t minus little v of t. The law of conservation of momentum dictates that the momentum of the new system must equal the momentum of the old. Here we start with momentum equaling m of t times v of t. That must equal the momentum of the rocket plus the momentum of the exhaust at time t plus h. That's this equation. The momentum of the rocket is m of t plus h times v of t plus h. The momentum of the exhaust is m of t minus m of t plus h times big V of t minus little v of t. If we do some algebra, we get this expression. Here we multiply m of t by v of t to get m of t times v of t. Then we multiply m of t with minus v of t to get minus m of t v of t, and so on. Notice that there's an m of t v of t on both sides of the equation. Those cancel. We can then combine terms. Each of these terms is multiplied by m of t plus h. That shows up here. And each of these terms is multiplied by v of t. And that shows up here. And then we'll move m of t plus h times v of t plus h minus vt to the left side of the equation. We can then divide these parts of both sides of the equation by h and then take the limit as h approaches 0. For v of t plus h minus v of t over h, the, the limit of v of t plus h minus v of t over h is dv dt. And likewise, for m of t plus h minus m of t over h, the limit is dm dt. That results in m of t times dv dt equals minus v of t times dm dt. This is the basic differential equation satisfied by a rocket with variable mass. The left-hand term is the product of the instantaneous mass of the rocket and its acceleration. The right-hand term is the accelerating force on the rocket caused by the thrust developed by the rocket engine. To get a large rust, thrust, you'd expel mass rapidly, which makes minus dm dt large. This equation can also be written as dv dt equals minus v of t over m of t dm dt. 1 over x is the derivative of the natural log of x. That means that 1 over m of t is ddm of the natural log of m of t. We can make that substitution, and here the two dms cancel. dv dt equals minus v of t dt of the natural log of m of t. This is a fundamental rocket equation. If we want to determine the change in velocity, we'd integrate both sides of this equation. Let's first assume that the velocity of the rocket, big V, and the velocity of the exhaust, little v, go in opposite directions. Big V of t is positive, little v of t is negative. That means we can abandon the vector notation and go with scalars. Let's integrate dv dt from time 0 to t. 
Let's further assume the exhaust comes out at a constant velocity, so little v is a constant. If it's constant, it can come outside the integral. This is now a simple formula to integrate. The left side is the net change in the velocity, or delta v. On the right-hand side, the antiderivative of d dt of the natural log of m of t dt is simply the natural log of m of t. The right-hand side becomes minus v times the natural log of m of t evaluated from 0 to t. That equals minus v times the natural log of m of t minus the natural log of m of 0. The natural log of a minus the natural log of b equals the natural log of a divided by b. So delta v then equals minus v times the natural log of m of 0 over m of t. If the rocket expels half its mass, then it would attain a delta velocity of minus v times the natural log of m over 1 half m. That equals minus v times the natural log of 2. That results in a delta v of minus v times 0 0.693. The Saturn V rocket put the first man on the moon in 1969. The first stage of the rocket had an initial mass of 2.8 times 10 to the 6th kilograms, total thrust of 3.4 times 10 to the 7th newtons, and a rate of fuel consumption of 1.4 times 10 to the 4th kilograms per second. The duration of the first stage burn was 150 seconds. Let's estimate the speed of the rocket at the end of the first stage. And for now, we'll ignore air resistance and gravity. Th the thrust, minus V dm dt, is 3.4 times 10 to the 7th newtons. The change in mass, dm dt, is minus 1.4 times 10 to the 4th kilograms per second. The velocity at which the exhaust is expelled relative to the rocket is V, and that equals thrust divided by minus dm dt. The mass of the vehicle after 150 seconds is m0. The initial mass, minus t times 1.4 times 10 to the 4th kilogram per second. That's t times the rate of fuel consumption. That equals 2.8 times 10 to the 6th minus 150 times 1.4 times 10 to the 4th. That equals 2.8 times 10 to the 6th minus 2.1 times 10 to the 6th. And that equals 7.0 times 10 to the 5th. The rocket lost 3 quarters of its weight. The velocity v of t at the end of the first stage is v, the speed of the exhaust, times the natural log of m of 0, the initial weight, divided by m of t, the weight after the first stage. That equals 2.4 times 10 to the 3rd times the natural log of 2.8 times 10 to the 6th over 7.0 times 10 to the 5th. 2.8 divided by 0 0.7 is 4, so that, that equates to 2.4 times 10 to the 3rd times the natural log of 4. That equates to 2.4 times 10 to the 3rd times 1.386, and that equals 3.3 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second. The actual velocity was 2.8 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second. That accounts for air resistance and gravity. The velocity we computed here would be as if the rocket were accelerating in space. Additional stages were necessary to get the velocity up to Earth escape velocity, 11 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second.